the, the thick of it was very much born out of well specifically it was the iraq war mm. and I, I then made my i asked myself well how can one person i.e tony blair yes. get away with that it tells you that there are no checks and balances that the prime minister if if he or she has a majority a healthy majority can do anything do you know what i mean absolutely yeah, anything yeah. there is no there is no uh, there's no judiciary that can step in there's no second chamber that yeah. can you know there are no checks and balances um, so there's that. Also, the tendency for politicians to to point themselves so forensically at the middle, the, the middle England, that you know the one hundred thousand in marginal constituencies who will swing it either mm. way, concentrate exclusively on them, taking for granted their left of centre or right yeah. of centre core cool. support. So not speaking to them. What you then get over the years are fewer and fewer people taking part in elections. Because they feel they're not being spoken to, sure. so why why take, you know, uh, and 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 therefore you get governments in power on the back of fewer and fewer votes. You know, in the nineteen fifties, turnout used to be like eighty eight percent, and the two main parties together used to get about ninety percent mm. of the vote. I remember Blair's third government got something like thirty four percent of the vote, yeah, yeah. and yet still a working majority. Now, that's the system just fallen into disrepair, really. And there hasn't really been a party with any kind of decent majority since. Sure. You know, Gordon Brown, when he took over, had to deal with uh, losing his majority. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> get, well, it reducing as just wear and tear, yeah, yeah, losing yeah. by-elections. <laughs> Cameron came in on a coalition. Sure. Uh, uh, he, he narrowly won his next election, which then Theresa May squandered. Mm. So again, we're now in a kind of bizarre coalition that isn't a coalition or with a party thinking it can run the entire Brexit strategy. The biggest thing to have happened to Britain since the Second World War as a minority government, mm. you know, without any kind of consensus. So that's why democracy has gone into despair. And, and, and you therefore uh, get two sections of the political spectrum getting bigger and bigger and bigger, feeling not listened to. Yes, you get people on the left and on the right feeling not listened to. So they gravitate towards people who are not like conventional politicians. Because because if the conventional politicians aren't listening to you, what do you do? We'll go for, you know, anyone who isn't a politician. So you've got your Nigel Farage's and your Jeremy Corbyn's in America. You've got your Donald Trump's and your Bernie Sanders, you know. And 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 that's what's happening. It's this polarisation and, and the collapse of the centrist approach to politics because it became so dementedly centrist that it was at the expense of, of everything course. else, yes. you know. So well, there you go. That's absolutely bang on.